Item number SCP-884 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Due to the events of January 11th, 2000 All access to SCP-884-4 is currently denied and all requests to examine or test SCP-884-4 are to be submitted directly to O5 for approval. SCP-884-4 is to be placed in deep storage at site Description SCP-884-4 is a men's shaving mirror made of glass and ivory, presumably constructed at some point around 1914. It is the last remaining object in what was originally a complete set of men's grooming tools, the others having been lost to testing and theft early this century. Other notable examples include SCP-884-2, alias The Razor, which was stolen by the Chaos Insurgency during their split with the Foundation, and SCP-884-6, alias The Comb, which was neutralized following incident SCP-884-64172. For additional information on the remaining objects classified as SCP-884, Please see file SCP-884, Original Collection. SCP-884-4 possesses a mild hallucinogenic quality. Subjects who have used it while shaving reported an inability to perceive the removal of hair, causing repeated attempts to shave areas of the face that, in reality, have already been shaved. This usually results in irritation and has, in one instance, contributed to the accidental severing of the carotid artery. Addendum SCP-884 Original Collection Information on the remaining lost pieces of SCP-884 is fairly sketchy in many places. Due to the civil war in the Foundation that resulted in the formation of the Chaos Insurgency, many of the original documents and pieces were lost. However, some data has been recovered collected, and observed in the intervening time about the additional units which were originally included in the collected SCP. This information is open for the free review of any people assigned to SCP-884's containment. However, this information should not be shared with people who are not members of the containment team. Agent L. SCP-884-1 The Bag SCP-884-1 was the leather bag which contained the pieces at recovery. Photographs of the bag show that it seems to be equipped with a zipper, the style of which places its construction at 1910 to 1912, at the earliest. It was initially regarded as lacking any anomalous qualities of its own. However, after approximately 10 years of analysis on the objects consisting of SCP-884, the actual time frame has been lost entirely. It was noted to have retained its original suppleness and softness. The original hypothesis that the objects consisting of SCP-884 were immune to the passage of time was amended when it was discovered that objects placed in SCP-884-1 seemed to be placed in a form of stasis. Tests with fruits and vegetables verified this. SCP-884-1 was lost during the Foundation Civil War, when several of the SCP-884 objects were stolen. Testing was in progress at the time of the loss, but data has not been recovered. Original Classification Safe Current Location Believed to still be in the possession of the Chaos Insurgency. Recovery is a Class 4 priority. SCP-884-2, The Razor. With the exception of SCP-884-4 and SCP-884-6, both of which were or are in the Foundation's possession, more information on SCP-884-2 exists than any other object in the collection. SCP-884-2 was a straight-edge folding razor with what appeared to be a silver blade and an ivory handle. When opened, the razor blade could be drawn through the air, forming a kind of nanoscopic event. Original documents reference this event as a cut in the surface of the universe, 
which comes across as more dramatic than strictly necessary, but typical for documents written at the time. The event itself was not able to be properly studied at the time due to a lack of necessary instruments, but the size was estimated by analyzing the damage caused by it. The event created was capable of slicing through any object which passed through the space it occupied, regardless of speed or approach to the event. Tested materials which were severed included steel, iron, lead, wood, gold, diamond, aluminum, and the skin and flesh of various living creatures. Tests with heavier elements were forbidden following the death of three researchers in an event which was, unfortunately, expunged from the original documents. The event itself degrades over time, becoming duller as the universe heals. This will lead to objects passing through it encountering slight resistance, while still being cut. Then a firmer location which does not cut. Then, a sensation of thicker air. A correlation was found between the sharpness of the razor and the duration of the event. Original classification, Euclid. Current location, known to have been in the possession of the Chaos Insurgency as recently as 1984, according to obtained documents. Recovery is a Class II priority. SCP-8843, The Shaving Cup and Brush. SCP-8843 was the only paired object which required both halves of the object to function. The cup was carved from ivory, with a small painting of a horse on the side. The brush was ivory with horsehair bristles. There is no information on the exact means or function of SCP-8843, and documents originating from the time which reference it make mention of three unfortunate instances of it being activated, the last of which, quote, left a massive hole in the center of Site-6's containment sector, allowing for the escape of three other objects, two of which were recovered by the information deleted. The document goes on to make note of damaging particles, several related deaths, and incalculable loss of material due to each of these events. There is no information on where these events happened, other than Site-6, which was entirely demolished and reconstructed in 1977, or further information on the activation method or specific effect of SCP-8843. It is known that at least one of these events required a Class L restructuring, but there is no information on what exactly that event entailed either. Original Classification Keter Current Location while many documents following the Foundation Civil War make note of the insurgency, possibly having possession of SCP-8843, no definitive proof has been found. The last reference to it before the war makes note that it was placed in deep storage at a location. No further information is available. SCP-8844 The Shaving Mirror Check the current documentation of SCP-884 for complete information on the object, as it is the last remaining piece in Foundation custody. SCP-884-5 The Scissors SCP-884-5 was the first of the objects to be completely understood by the Foundation. SCP-884-5 was a pair of silver scissors with an etched design, undescribed in existing documents which were used to open and close things. Initial data noted in the personal records of the supervising doctor at the time recorded the basic effect. When pointed at a closed door with the blades closed, the door could be opened by simply opening the blades. When pointed at a door which was open with the blades open, then closing them, the door would close. The effect works on boxes, locks, crates, drawers, and most other objects. There is no effect on an open object if the blades start closed, and there is no effect on a closed object if the blades start open. The effect functions normally if they're turned to the side, though, and open to the floor or other object which can't be opened or closed. A quaint, largely useless item. The full extent of SCP-8845's effect was not understood until a few weeks later, when it was accidentally used on a living person and opened them. 
The subject's organs, bones, and viscera were ripped out of their orifices and deposited on the ground before their skin turned itself inside out. Closing the pile of body parts resulted in the messy, inefficient, incomplete reassembly of the subject, who sometimes continued to live for minutes after the event. Furthermore, the original testing chamber later became more and more dangerous as the full ramifications of opening and closing the scissors was discovered. Surfaces which were opened slowly lost strength, became more and more brittle, and eventually crumbled. The inverse effect was seen in surfaces which were closed. Some samples still remain, but their studies showed no definitive reason for the cause of the effect. Original Classification Originally Euclid, then moved to Keter. Under today's standard, it would probably be listed as safe. Current Location While originally stolen by the Chaos Insurgency during the Foundation Civil War, this object was known to be in the possession of Marshall Carter and Dark as early as the 1940s. Offers to purchase the item have been politely but firmly declined as recently as the 1980s. Recovery is a Class 3 priority. SCP-8846 The Comb SCP-8846 was an ivory comb with a carved design. Again, undescribed, in the body above the teeth. SCP-8846 was one of the pieces of SCP-884, which was retained by the Foundation after the Civil War, and it was considered to be the premier piece of the collection. For approximately three hours after use of the comb, a time dilation effect occurred around the object, causing time to slow down the closer one came to SCP-8846. After the duration ended, time would immediately resume at normal speed. SCP-8846 was invaluable in the recontainment of over a dozen SCPs, following breaches that would otherwise be considered disastrous. Research into the nature of the effect was ongoing until the destruction of SCP-8846 in 1958. For unknown reasons, SCP-8846 was removed from containment and activated several times by an unknown party over the course of several hours. Seven corpses were discovered in quick succession, leading Foundation officials to conclude that someone was, quote, projecting SCP-8846's effect at a location." End quote. The target was discovered and neutralized via gunfire over the course of several hours, due to the dilation effect. The target was never identified, and SCP-8846 was rendered neutralized in the crossfire. Original Classification Thaumiel Current Location Remains are available for study at Site-18's deep storage facility, as well as the remains of the corpse. Please note that only long-distance observation may be used, as the dilation effect is still ongoing. SCP-8847 The Tweezers SCP-8847 was a set of silver tweezers, and it was referred to in documentation as the very example of why the Foundation exists by the researcher who uncovered its effect. When pointed at an object and used, presumably squeezed, but specifics unknown, SCP-8847 would grip an object and allow it to be manipulated. The object could then be lifted, moved, rotated, spun, etc., with no regard of the weight, size, or mass of the object in question. Surviving testing records indicate that, among other things lifted, an anvil, train car, and battleship all showed no difference in the effect. SCP-8847 was utilized as a potent weapon during the Foundation Civil War, and it was considered one of the more dangerous objects in the collection, as the full range of its effect was unknown. One researcher at the time was known to have remarked that, we could bring the very moon down on our heads. SCP-8847 was confirmed to have been used against a number of global occult coalition forces during a raid on a Chaos Insurgency base in Cairo, Egypt, in 1961. The object was recovered and destroyed by the GOC following this raid. 
Original classification, Euclid. The requests of an upgrade to Keter are still on file. No response to these requests have been discovered. Current location, no remains of the object have ever been produced, and we only have the word of the GOC that they successfully destroyed it. Careful monitoring for similar effects is ongoing, but considered a low priority. Addendum 1 SCP-8844 At the insistence of Insurgency Defector A, one of three operatives to openly approach the Foundation, with information about the insurgency, and request the opportunity to rejoin, Foundation officials have ordered SCP-8844's containment staff to move the object to a safer location at Site- Addendum 2 SCP-8844 February 19th, 1950 Incident Report SCP-8844 Following the deaths of Agent Norris and Dr. Ignit on October 14th, 19 At the hands of Chaos Insurgency personnel, Insurgency Defector A is to be terminated. SCP-8844 reclassified as lost. Addendum 3 SCP-8844 April 11th, 1950 Recovery Report SCP-8844 Successful raids on suspected insurgency storage locations resulted in the recovery of SCP- SCP-8844 SCP- and no fewer than anomalous objects. SCP-8844 was discovered in an insurgency lab with several extensive experiments set up, including Data Expunged and Data Expunged. Agent Jones and Corporal Blake are credited with the recovery of SCP-8844 at great personal peril. Both have been awarded for their actions, as well as one week paid leave. Dr. Cho has been provided with a lab and staff to reconstruct insurgency research. Addendum 4 SCP-8844 Extensive testing has concluded that the insurgency's testing was without purpose. SCP-8844 is remanded to storage at Site- For a full report of testing and trials, please see attached document SCP-8844- Addendum 5 SCP-8844 October 2nd, 19 Concerning Insurgency Action 327, the Chaos Insurgency staged an attack on Site- losing approximately of their number. The only target of the attack, circumstantial evidence has led officials to conclude, was SCP-8844's containment locker. By order of O5, testing on SCP-8844 has been slated to resume. Addendum 6 SCP-8844 Due to Dr. Cho's drowning death in 19... Dr. Rasmussen has been asked to head research on SCP-8844. Researchers will be asked to report to duty on January 11th, 19... Addendum 7 SCP-8844 Report of Dr. Rasmussen, January 19... After two years... Continual tests have repeatedly shown no additional abnormalities in SCP-8844. Due to the persistence of the threat by the insurgency, it is recommended that extreme care be taken in protecting SCP-8844, and agents be assigned to uncover the information the insurgency apparently has concerning SCP-8844. Addendum 8 SCP-8844 Field transmission of Agent L, 2000. Upon receiving final communique of Agent P, following the deep cover placement and reception of Agent P, significant information concerning SCP-8844 has come to light, most having originally been removed from Foundation files before the split with the insurgency by members of the faction, particularly the head researcher, Dr. G. SCP-8844 must be placed in secure lockdown 
and all Foundation employees who have come in contact with it must report to Dr. S for immediate examination. Final report will be submitted to O5 via personal courier within 24 hours. Addendum 9 SCP-8844 SCP-8844 is to be placed in deep storage at site No further contact is to be allowed with SCP-8844. SCP-8844 is now reclassified as Euclid until final prognosis is made by Agent L and Dr. S. 052 Addendum 10 SCP-8844 Final report of Agent L. Having now worked on this case for close to eight years, it is with some pleasure that I close it. SCP-8844 has been a continual mystery in containment circles, with the interest of the insurgency, including the sacrifice of no fewer than twenty of their members, in acquiring the object, leading to much interest. It was only after the Foundation's own agents were successful in discovering the motives of the insurgency that the truth has come to light. Even then, the full ramifications may never be discovered. In addition to its vaguely unsettling effect, SCP-8844 had a longer-term symptom that was not discovered during testing due to the regular terminations of Class D subjects. Between four to seven years after exposure, victims of SCP-8844 begin to experience what Dr. S has called doubt. Symptoms begin subtly, generally notable only as a checking and rechecking of reports and results, making sure doors are locked, etc. The early onset is almost indistinguishable from mild obsessive-compulsive disorder. Later symptoms develop over the following two to six years, resulting in an increasing disability to create final reports, struggles to make simple choices, and, eventually, a complete inability to make decisions. Thus far, Dr. S has found no way to cure these problems, and personnel affected are to be placed in low-risk positions. Until later stages set in, they have been discovered to be extremely useful due to their fastidiousness, and the Foundation has saved significant resources by using them in this capacity. As for the involvement of the insurgency, it is the opinion of this agent that their motives were simple. They wanted the Foundation to experiment on SCP-8844, specifically to infect more and more members of the Foundation. Due to the mundane nature of the work, and the low level of researchers assigned in a long-term capacity, close to separate instances of infection have been discovered, more than times the number of personnel they themselves have lost. Examination of causes of death from practically every person associated with research on SCP-8844 had to do with an inability to make a crucial decision at an important moment. Agent Jones, for example, hesitated a moment between drawing his weapon and running when confronted with SCP in 1950, resulting in his death. Dr. Cho drowned in 19, presumably unable to decide it was time to get out of the bath. This has been one of the most elegant and long-term plans the insurgency has ever enacted, and its efficacy is obvious. Recommend immediate investigation into the SCPs known to have been examined by the previous members of the insurgency and the temporary freezing of any ongoing research in the interim. Agent L, Containment Specialist Second Class. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-883, Extra Dimensional Beehive, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.